Hello everyone. This is not the way that I wanted to start this whatsoever, but unfortunately I do have to start it this way. And first and foremost, I'd like to apologize to my instructors or anyone else who is watching this later down the line. If it seems lackluster or if it seems like it's missing anything. Truth be told, I was planning to have a whole time lapse. Well, the first thing I wanted to do was have a whole kind of like mini animated thing for this project. And I started drawing it and immediately started feeling bad about it. So I gave up on it. So instead I was going to do a time lapse and kind of talk over that and add visuals and such. And now I'm very low on time. And as I'm finishing what I was going to do the time lapse on, because Clip Studio is stupid, I wasn't able to get it done because the time lapse never recorded. So I will be showing off a bit of my other art pieces and maybe just drawing a bit as I talk about the required topics once again, because I have to do it all again, because none of this is ever recording. Once again, I really do apologize to anyone who ends up viewing this in the future, near or distant, that this couldn't be up to par. Anyways, I hope you enjoy the video anyway. Thank you. Hello everybody, um, I apologize again if I didn't do it already during the preface of this video. I do have to try to kind of do this in one take, and I, I already kind of expect to not really get as high as a grade that I was shooting for on it, because everything kind of went, like, downhill <laughs> really fast, so that did happen. But I thought the least I could do is try to still, you know, I shouldn't give up. And that is going to be one of the things that we're going to be covering today. So the main topic of this video is FYE, or first year experience, and why it's important. Now, FYE, or first year experience, is a college class, which, as you can probably guess, is for a first year experience in college. And so... That's exactly what we're going to be talking about, and I'm I'm already kind of stalling with us, sorry. But, yeah. And... Basically, in case you don't already know, or you don't recognize this voice, this is, at least for the instructor watching the video, this is EM. And as for my friends and or family that knows me, or internet people that know me, this is, I go by Saturn on here. But, um, yes. And the importance of FYE. FYE is important because it's sort of a guide through your first year and or semester. I believe this is a semester long class. But it's sort of your guide throughout it all. And ends up being a really helpful one if you take the advice that's given to you. And I say that because I did, but for a good chunk I also kind of didn't. Which is kind of why some of my work has been lackluster or that I've been procrastinating because I gave in. I wasn't supposed to give in and that's something that we learned is that we weren't supposed to do. But it's a bad habit of mine and I've been trying to break it for a while now. But it's still working because the fact that I managed to, after realizing that everything went wrong, to get up and try this again... I think that says something, so I would like to thank my instructor for helping and being such a great help and a great instructor throughout the semester. So let's start, so let's start, there's going to be a lot of these, I can't really regulate these, I'm sorry, but let's start from the top. Module 1, which is building a study plan. Building a study plan can definitely be useful when it comes to Say you have a test around the corner, or you have a project that's due, or things that are also going on in your personal life that seem to be a routine. Making a study habit, at least for those that study, will be very beneficial because it'll basically let you know what you need to do and when you need to do it. And that can be a great thing to have handy when you don't know what to do and you don't know when to do it. 
So having one is definitely something you need. Now, how to go about making one of these, I'm pretty sure you can use maybe a planner or even just a random piece of notebook paper and you can like magnet it to your fridge or something like our parents used to do with our paintings when we were kids. Just make sure it's somewhere that you can see it and somewhere that's easy to access and you'll be able to follow it. Now on study plans, and this is kind of dipping into a bit of, I believe it was module five or well, module five, let's go with step five, let's call them steps in this video, but within that module, I slash step of categorizing what's important and what's not. So on your study list or on your study plan, I should say, you should have the most important things at like, because they're the most important, they should be the first things you do. Like for example, checking to see if Clip Studio is recording my time lapse should have been the first thing I did, but I didn't do it and I'm suffering the consequences as will you if you wait too long to get work turned in. That's kind of just a natural occurrence. But well, it's not a nat well, it can be an unnatural occurrence if you know about it and you don't do anything. But it's natural for some people when they really are like, they have a good heart and they want to get their work done. And then they just kind of forget about that the work is there because they didn't have anyone or anything to remind them that it's there. Or maybe say you're fresh out of school and you're usually used to your teachers letting you know when work is due. You got to realize that you're an adult now. You're in the adult world. You have to be responsible for yourself. And that's, that's kind of how the world is, but it's not that bad. At least I don't think it's that bad yet. But as far as making a study plan goes, there's also holding yourself accountable. So say you did know about an assignment and you didn't end up getting it done, not because you didn't have time, but because you chose not to. And that's something that you should realize about yourself that isn't a good thing. You should work towards fixing that issue or at least regulating it. Because truth be told, and I'm sure instructors and teachers also know this, not all work is required to pass the class. And if you really have that little self-respect for yourself that you want to do that, then I guess be my guest. But you should still hold yourself accountable for the things that you do, whether they're school-related or not school-related. Like, say you started an argument, and it's clearly your fault, but you don't want to own up to it. Everyone's going to kind of look at you funny because you didn't, like, you know, pull your weight and take responsibility. But I think in, in this sense, accountability and responsibility are different. Taking responsibility is usually referring to knowing what you've done, while holding yourself accountable is knowing what you've done and trying to work towards fixing it. So you decide not to turn an assignment and you realize you're great, you're starting to fail or fall behind or people are starting to treat you a bit differently because they can tell that you don't really care about yourself as much as you should. Your first step should be to acknowledge that, and the next step after that is to try and change. Try to face the problem. That's how I am with my art. When I feel like it's going in a bad direction, I take a moment, take a breath, realize where I am, and try to figure out if this is a good spot for me or not. So you should think about this too. Wherever you are in this moment, is it a good spot for you? Has there been something that you've been doing that you haven't really thought about that you've done up until this point? What can you do to fix it or what can you do to improve? Things like that will definitely help you, not just in college, but also in life. So definitely remember that. I believe the next module we should go to slash step would be step two, which is a very bad habit of mine if you can as you can see by my already cluttered drawing space here is getting organized organization is a very key part to life itself whether it's a messy kind of organized like me where you know everything where everything is well when someone else walks into a room they kind of just look at you funny or to being like organized and uptight like a stereotypical nerd in a high school rom-com you know but staying organized is always important so you know where everything is and when to access it. So like, say you have a handwritten assignment that's due, let's say tomorrow. And as you're watching this video, you're realizing that it's due tomorrow and then you can't seem to find it anywhere. 
So don't look back at the screen and say, oh, you're reading my mind. You probably know where it is, because of that, I don't. Unless maybe you hid it in your sock drawer or something, I don't know. But point is, when it comes to assignments like that, you definitely want to have a safe spot for it. Otherwise, if you don't, you'll probably end up losing it and probably end up failing it. And accidents do happen, not any dog ate my homework kind of accidents, but more so maybe you spilled water on it and it became like borderline unreachable or unreachable, unreadable. Or maybe you just kind of, I don't know, tore it up while you were like tearing up envelopes from junk mail or something. I don't know, things happen, but you just got to be careful and make sure to keep your items in safe spaces that you know where they are. But there's also organizing your friendships and organizing your social interactions with people. We're organizing groups that you get to hang around and people you get to be around. When I first started, and for those that don't know, I'm going to Cincinnati State Community at, I believe it's Sec Community and Technical College. Forgive me if I'm wrong. But I started hearing about a lot of different clubs that are being offered. And one of those clubs being a video game club, possibly, and a LGBTQ plus alliance club that, of course, I'd love to join. But for those watching this, please don't send this to my mother. <laughs> if I did, if she were to know that I am transitioning from male to female, she'd probably throw a fit. So that's why I never ended up joining the club, because she would have eventually found out. And I'm not really sure what I'd do if she did. But one thing that I definitely regret, though, is not joining that club or not getting to know people as well as I would like to. Because maybe I would have made more friends that way. And not only with more friends is it a good thing to have more friends, but it would have also given me more people to feel comfortable around when asking for help or talking to about college work or maybe even just hanging out with. It's just... It'll be a much more chill and enjoyable experience if I did that. So don't make my mistake. <laughs> Please make friends and join clubs and have fun. But that's really all there is to that. Oh, well, I lied. No, there isn't. <laughs> There's also other resources that you have, like financial aid, or I believe there was the honors program. Things that will not only make your college experience easier, but maybe easier, easily affordable, and maybe a lot more fulfilling. So if you go to C-State, or if you go to any other college that have these resources, I think you should go check them out. If you don't really find anything that you enjoy there, maybe you'll make some friends. Maybe you'll find some people that you like. I don't know, but yeah. So, now we can move on. I'm realizing now maybe I shouldn't be covering every modular step because this video is going to be a really long time and I'm sorry. I don't think I even did that in the original, but I'm just kind of, I know that this is going to be kind of lackluster and I really just want to make it worth everyone's time. I should really stop like talking about that and just get on with it. Um, Step three slash module three, which is, drum roll please. <laughs> Setting goals and maintaining a schedule. Now this ties back to module one's planning, like planning what you need and where you need to, like when you need to do it based on due dates and importance. Setting goals and managing schedule also kind of goes hand in hand with that because setting goals, some need to be timely, like the smart, like a smart goal, which I believe was sustainable, manageable, attainable SMR, uh, reachable I'm probably way off with this I don't really remember but the main thing that I do remember is that it does need to be timely and you do need to make sure that you get it done on time you need to make sure that this goal is something realistic that's what the R stands for, for realistic something that you can do within a semester or within a certain period of your life before it becomes too late or you realize you've taken too long on it. It needs to be something that 
will benefit you in the long run. It needs to be something that will make you happy. Things like that that you gotta think about when you're setting goals for yourself. Like a goal that I set for myself this semester was to get better at art. I bought Cliff Studio and it's a great program, even though I wouldn't have to be sitting here record re-recording all of this if my time lapse recorded. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's a really great program and it's really helped me a lot, not only with like drawing and practicing drawing for my college courses, but also just as a coping mechanism for stuff going on in the real world that I really do enjoy. Yeah, but, and here's where managing a schedule comes in. Although run escaping from the real world and doing things like drawing and playing video games may seem fun, you can't use that as an escape from your work or from what's important all the time or you're going to fall behind. And if you do fall behind, well, it's really your own fault. Which is why while setting a schedule, maybe you should schedule your own allocated time of when you play video games or when you, you know, have fun. I'm not saying you should completely like, uh, I have Saturday off, I can do whatever I want. I'll give myself two hours to actually have fun and enjoy life, and the rest of the time I'll spend studying. Like, I'm not saying you have to do that. Just be aware of what you have to do, and maybe try to get it done. Because the sooner you get it done, the more time you have to just chill out and enjoy life, you know? That's definitely something you should, you know, take in, super for thought. I feel like I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself here, so let's, let's skip ahead a bit. Uh, module 5. Self-awareness, building and, and building healthy relationships. Now, self-awareness, if you think back to module 1, holding yourself accountable, being aware of your... Not only your mistakes, but also your, you know, things you're good at. Knowing what you're good at, but knowing what you're bad at, and knowing how to fix what you're bad at, or knowing what your weaknesses are when it comes to the thing you're good at, will definitely be beneficial when filling out job applications, or going experiencing job interviews, or just having conversations with people so you know what you should say or what you shouldn't say, or maybe what you sound like while saying a certain thing. That, that one's just a tidbit from my personal experience with me and my friends, but I feel like it might fit relevant here. But things like that, that are really things that you should think about. And building healthy relationships, making sure you have a good relationship with your friends, your classmates, and your teachers. It's not, it's not gonna, I'm not gonna say it's a kind of thing where like, oh, you mean if I become really good friends with my teacher, they might help me with my grades and make them easier? No, they're not going to do that. Why would they do that? That's dumb. Get that out of your head now. But <laughs> they're not going to do that for you. But they can be people that you can confide in or that you can tell them about what's going on at home or what's going on in your life. And you can listen what's going to what's going on theirs because you never know. You may have a lot more in common than you think. Which might make... Uh, sitting through classes or sitting next to people who you don't know more enjoyable and maybe you can get to know them and maybe you can enjoy knowing them for a really long time that's well, great really great things and building healthy relationships means being around people that are going to help you be happy and being happy is something great to be especially when dealing with work and school and such because, at least for me, when I get down, or I get like I start to get into a depressive state, I kind of shut down and I stop getting things done. Now, is that a bad habit? Yes, that's very much a bad habit and I should break. But I don't know how. But I'll focus on that on another day. Let's continue on, though. Things also, not only, this isn't really building healthy relationships, it's more of just respect in general including people. And while we were learning about this and Jade and such in our class, it did sort of remind me of being younger and dealing with discrimination, not really for my race or my skin color or what I am now, but because of a disability I was born with called my crusha. And it's basically, I wouldn't say a disease, more like a birth defect, where one of my ears is kind of like squishy-ish, and I'm, ha I'm partially deaf. A lot of people assume that I've learned sign language, which I haven't, but I'd like to. 
and some people just kind of have really rude remarks to say about the matter and i grew up dealing with that a lot and i always wish that i'd be included in things or not seen differently because of things that i couldn't control i know i'm not the only one who feels that way but it's nice knowing that people some people do go out of their way to make sure that people like us are okay or are included or do feel like they belong and that's what inclusion is but moving on to uh, module six financial academic and career decision making so this is basically something you should think about especially the financial part during your college life and at the end of your college life so picture this here's a hypothetical and i'll even try to draw this out a little bit in a little corner over here in my disorganized drawing board so say you just graduated right congratulations you graduated college you got your degree and you're just kind of like, okay, now what do I do? You get a job with your degree after filling out a job application exactly how we learned and being honest and just being a great person, a good enough person to get said job. And then you start dealing with money problems. Say you say things start happening to your car, maybe your family or your pet if you decide to get one. That really start taking a toll on your wallet. Then what are you going to do? Planning financially and making sure that you not only have a stable job, but have a stable income and making sure your pockets aren't flat empty is definitely something you want to consider. Because like a lot of people say, money does make the world go round, whether we like it or not. Sure, it's a negative and grim way to think about it, but that's why we get to we have the opportunity to pick jobs that make us happy which is why i'm picking a job like graphic design because drawing and designing makes me happy and being able to live my life doing those things that i like makes me happy too and i guess it's just about time for that closing statement i'd like to i'd like to hope lessons that i've learned throughout my entire college semester and this first year have been I should definitely give more people chances and speak to more people and get to know more people better because people are really nice most people are though another lesson that I've learned is how to be responsible with things like money or time and Realizing that I don't have all the time in the world and that assignments are going to be due one day or another. So it's better to get them done as soon as I can instead of procrastinate like I usually do. And another lesson I learned is just how, how important college is to our futures and how, like, I already said important, but how, how much of, I wouldn't say an advantage, but how much more ahead we'll be when it's all over and i think that is definitely something that you should consider for especially for those deciding hey should i go to college or should i just not go and take the rest of my life to just do whatever might be more beneficial if you do go you just gotta be responsible and aware of these things but depending on who you are and what you go for Maybe we'll look back on the end at the end of it and realize that it was all a really good investment and a really good opportunity to have. And the habit that I think you should all, if you don't already not have this problem already, that I'm going to do, and that I'm going to do, there is no procrastinating out of making a habit about not procrastinating. So we're going to stop procrastinating in ways that I'm going to make this obvious to myself is by looking at, well, not looking at, but when I have work in front of me, I'm always gonna, I'm gonna program my Alexa. Maybe I'll try to program it as well as just kind of leave myself reminders around on what I need to do and when I need to get it done. Because they're gonna be reminders so simple and small that I shouldn't procrastinate on making those. It wouldn't take anything but a couple of seconds to make little reminders to myself. 
And I can make it attractive. I'm going to be putting said reminders on little purple slips of post-it note because purple is my favorite color. Or I can make it attractive by having my friends encourage me to get it done. I can make it easy. I don't really need to make it easy, though. It's already pretty easy if you just get it done before the due date. I just have to... I guess the way to make it easy is to ask for help when I really need it. And the satisfying part will come when I'm done procrastinating. Or when my probability of procrastinating on an assignment has reached very low percentages. Then it'll be a really, really satisfying experiment experiment experience and i'll feel a lot of joy about it but yeah i really hope that to anyone who watches this and to my instructors as well that i haven't taken up too much of your time and that this is at least the passing grade if not 100 percent, because i know it probably won't be 100 percent due to my clip studio not functioning and me having to basically improvise this whole project last minute. To which, once again, I am very sorry. But I can show off, for maybe the last few seconds of the video, the final project itself. And it's grand unveiling. So, you know, there's this old saying that parents used to say to their kids when they'd like, you know, want them to study whether it's near the end of the year for finals or for a random pop quiz. It's usually hit the books. So, maybe you should get on that. I know some of you watching this probably have some work to do, so go do it. Anyway, I hope you all enjoyed the video. Have a nice night.